asteroid warning drill. Millions of people are to be evacuated in a dire ESA, ESA impact simulation. ESA stands for European Space Agency. Well, uh, they're obviously trying to do something to prepare for such a real life event. Uh, we know that this week, the whole week, NASA, FEMA, and various other space agencies are working on the tabletop exercise drill with a 1% forecasting of an Earth impact, 1%, not more. I would say they should have at least 50%, but anyway, that's their drill, it's their prerogative. What criteria they want to use? This is um, yesterday's article by the European Space Agency. It's on, it was on Express UK, it's also on Big World Tale. European Space Agency, ESA and NASA teamed up to prepare for the impact of a monstrous asteroid that could have uh, a, an extinction level type of an event on Earth. Part of the asteroid warning drill involves an international social media campaign to simulate the actions of space agencies, scientists, governments, and citizens, and what they would do. And uh, this started on April 29th, and it will end on Friday, May 3rd. ESA will live out the hypothetical doomsday scenario imagined for the year 2028. By the way, the year 2029 is the year the Apophis uh, near-Earth asteroid uh, is coming at us. At the first time, April 13th, Friday, April 13th, Apophis in 10 years will come. And if it has a, a window, they have to calculate the window as it, as it comes to us because when it comes around the next time, it may impact us. That's how dangerous this Apophis asteroid is. So I guess they're getting ready to do, to do this. In the meantime, we know that NASA has the uh, DART mission to uh, dislodge, to uh, relocate an asteroid. We know that uh, JAXA Hayabusa 2 exploded onto the Ryugu asteroid, which is actually a minor planet of the Apollo group. The Apollo group are uh, very close near-Earth asteroids. One of them was uh, just exploded over us a couple of years ago, the Chelyabinsk um, meteor over Russia. We didn't see that coming at all because it was coming from uh, the area of the sun and we couldn't see it because of the sun's uh, light, the sunlight. Uh, okay. And these agencies say that we are not in danger of impact. As far as I, they know, it's because of the fact that they have, as far as the uh, known asteroids that they know of, but there are those that they don't know of. For example, the one that hit us, Chelyabinsk, they didn't know of, and a lot of others that uh, have come at us that they don't, know, they don't see. So they're doing this exercise. Um, it'll end on Friday, May 3rd. The scenario is basically along the lines of the Apophis asteroid that's to come at us in uh, 10 years' time. And um, alongside the drill, ESA released a brief mock documentary showcasing the moment an asteroid is found to be headed towards our Earth. The agency said in a statement, quote, it's the year 2028, and the European Space Agency has been carefully monitoring a worrying situation, an enormous asteroid is en route to strike Earth, although the exact point of impact is not yet clear. National governments are planning to evacuate millions of people, an undertaking that will cause untold human misery and disruption on a gigantic scale. If the asteroid's impact zone can be fixed, perhaps such chaos can be avoided. As precious hours pass, find out how ESA's Planetary Defense Office is able to obtain crucial information on this potential disaster as part of the agency's space safety activities. In the ESA video, a team of astronomers at ESA's operations center in Darm Darmstadt, Germany, discover a rock 656 feet, that's 200 meters across, that is hurtling towards space. The asteroid is 10 times as big as the infamous 2013 
Chelyad Bing's feature, that was the Apollo group uh, asteroid, which are in fact minor planets, many of them are minor planets, which injured more than a thousand people in Chelyabinsk uh, when that hit over Russia, when it exploded over Russia's Chelyabinsk Oblast six years ago, 2013. The scenario imagined the asteroid will hit Earth somewhere in between Tokyo and Copenhagen in just 24 days, and the asteroid impact simulations show an asteroid this big would be powerful enough to wipe out an entire city. The news anchor in the video says, quote, even 10 kilometers from the impact, heat will ignite clothing and cause third degree, burn, third degree burns, end quote. That's what we know because of the heat coming in, it boils the atmosphere, let alone evaporating whole lakes, rivers, and, uh, uh, you know, seas, uh, and also destroying the vegetation, uh, also perhaps bringing with it... Uh, poisonous metals and uh, materials and gases. And also, of course, depending on where it hits, it uh, could uh, jolt the surface of the earth, the crust, and of course, create earthquakes and uh, start waking up volcan volcanoes to have volcanic eruptions, of course, leading to ash, uh, ash clouds and uh, tephra and uh, lava flows and uh, creating, of course, all this, the, the gas emissions that go up into the atmosphere, coming down as hydros, um, 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 sulfuric acid, burning up the trees, burning up anything living, burning up our skins, our, you know, our bones. And that's a terrible scenario, obviously. So there's a lot that goes with an asteroid strike. Uh, uh, the national governments are planning to evacuate millions of people, European Space Agency would say, in the same video, scientists later narrowed down the asteroid's trajectory as it's coming in to a splashdown in the Pacific, meaning all threats of destruction are averted. This is, of course, a scenario. And, of course, in a scenario, in a movie, in a script, you have to have a good ending, a happy ending. So there is a happy ending. It splashes down into the South Pacific, into the ocean, so that means that nobody, uh, they don't have to take any action whatsoever. <laughs> That's a nice exercise. The exercise says we don't have to take any action. Oh, how nice, whoopee! <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to do anything. Oh, what a nice exercise. It's nice to have exercise like that because nobody fails. Everybody passes the exam. Then you don't do anything, so you're all passed. Now, if you had to do something and everything was ending up, something ended up wrong in the chain of events, then uh, everybody's fracked. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, you know, because we've had so many asteroid impacts in the, all over the Earth. So, okay, they're saying, oh, everybody's just splashed down, it's going to splash down into the Pacific, meaning destruction is averted. The asteroid warning drill is part of the annual International Academy of Astronautics, AII, Planetary Defense Conference held in Washington, D.C. in the USA. The yearly event aims to tackle questions regarding Earth's safety and readiness to face potential threats lurking in the depths of space. ESA said solar activity, asteroids, and artificial space debris are all posing threats to our planet and our use of space. ESA space safety activities aim to safeguard society and critical satellites on which we depend, identifying and mitigating threats from space through projects such as fly-eye telescopes, the large, uh, the Lagrange space weather mission, and the HERA asteroid mission. As asteroid experts meet for the International Planetary Conference, Defense Conference, ESA is focused on the threat we face from space rocks. How likely is an asteroid impact? What is ESA doing to mitigate impact risks? Well, you can find out more at uh, Planetary Defense. Uh, you know, you can go research on it. All we know is, okay, they're trying to test out their methods on real live asteroids, okay? JAXA did it by uh, testing the Ryugu um, uh, asteroid, which is in, uh, part of the Apollo group, which are the ones that are very close to us. Bringing back a sample, it'll come back next year. Uh, that's one of my previous videos just before this one, I think two or three before this one. And uh, ESA, I don't know what it's doing. I don't know what it's doing. 
Is it sending out some? I know that NASA is sending something out and um, to the Didymos, is the smaller of the twin asteroids, and it will try and uh, relocate it, uh, try and move it substantially, not, not just a little bit. The way they're going to try and move it is by impacting it with the spaceship, and uh, hopefully the spaceship will have enough force when it impacts it to move it significantly away. We're not talking about like 10 or 20 or 100 meters. We're talking about miles away. You know, uh, how's that going to take place? I have no idea, but hopefully that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to have real, real life experiments, trying to uh, have that type of a system where they try and save humanity by doing that. Hopefully, it's not just two or three um, space agencies that get together to, to do this, you know, to take parts of a project and work on them, you know, like a project splitting up, like when you're building something. Uh, like you have a carpenter and you have a plumber and you have an electrician, you know, doing their work. Um, this is bad. I mean, you know, we even have prophecies concerning uh, spatial objects impacting Earth. This is prophecy. And this is something that everybody should work to uh, help protect humanity from. And maybe they should take parts of their defense spending and put it into the defense of humanity and Earth, planetary defense, that is. And everybody should chip in for that. Uh, that's my personal opinion. And uh, I don't see anything wrong with that. Uh, you, you're wasting so much money on so many other stupid things, you have to do something to create a system very quickly because Apophis is coming in in 10 years. And after that, it's coming in like in another seven years. You know? And uh, it's very wishful thinking. It's like hiding your head in the sand thinking, oh, it's going to hit the South Pacific. Nothing to do. Don't worry about it. We don't have to do anything. I don't think we would be that lucky. Anyway, I'll leave links below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.